Hello, welcome to IMTS 2024. My name is Tom Dang, Vice President of Lindex Nikon. Today I would like to introduce to you our new product for the 24 IMTS. It is called Work Holding. I'm pretty sure most of you already know some form of work holding is available for today's market. The big challenge here is that can we make a product of work holding that allow you to transfer between all your machine tools so that a, uni a uniform product could help the shop throughput do a quick setup and minimize the amount of time it takes to get a part on, the, on your uh, machine and start making chip. Now, let me introduce to you some of the product that we have today. You've seen this round part before, you've seen it all designed before. This is called the zero point system. But quite differently, our design is quite compact. It doesn't use ball bearing, it doesn't use a piston, it uses a Belleville spring with a taper and a knob, very similar to the machine spindle if I turn it upside down. So with this in mind, center can be established with a repeatability of one-tenth. And compared to other manufacturers, our design is much more compact, allowing you to have a much more stack up available for your Z-axis clearance. Wood coating is critical to your shop transformation. One of the things that people are constantly asking us today is, what are your solutions for our challenges? And what are those challenges? The biggest one is the lack of labor force or the skill gap. And the only way to answer that question is for you to start looking at a way to streamline your process, whether that will be in automation, and it is in many ways an automation uh, solution. But the predecessor to automation that you should look at is the work holding. Work holding is the predecessor to a successful automation. So today we will show you the work holding and then we'll introduce to you a little bit about how you can get into automation using the proper work holding techniques. So, as we talk about, the zero clamp system is one of our unique systems designed and patented with this in mind. We use Belvoir spring. We have 9,000 pound of pulling force on such a small diameter. We have a taper surface here that when the stud is pulled in, it is self-centered to a one-tenth repeatability. We have a preloaded tubular bearing that allows this to expand and center the stud. Therefore, when you use a four-point system, you do not need to have four different studs to centralize. You can use any four stud, change any configuration you want, and you still maintain a one-tenth repeatability. This is the key to our success. Compact, high clamping force, high repeatability. Now, let's talk about what goes on to a system like this. As you can see, here we have a rail vise system. I can demonstrate to you shortly by removing this. You can put a pull stud either on the rail or on the job or on the workpiece specifically. You can clamp it by a grid system of six part to do long rail for big part, or you can go diagonally to do short rail. The rail will be mounted onto here, and we have five axis vise that you can easily replace or remove and adjust based on the workpiece size. Clamp down and go. Now, the nice thing about this is you can change the clamp and reorient this so that you can take on a bigger, a longer workpiece. This is unique to our system, okay? It can be changed any direction you like. As you can see here, we have a variety of different rail. For, this is rail for, work, for big workpiece. These are rail for maybe some individuality, multiple stack up, something of this nature. Jaw, let's talk about jaw. Jaw is very simple. We have a rough jaw that has serrated cut, and then we have, let's come in here and take a look at these jaws. We have jaws that are serrated, and they are reversible to get you a larger size or to a smaller size, reversible jaw. Same for finishing jaw. They are reversible, capable of going to any workpiece size you would like. So these are the jaw. 
We also have machinable jaw to accommodate aluminum for finishing work or steel jaw. We will talk about this guy a little bit later, but this is one of the amazing part about our clamping system. But for now, let's move over to our automation Grady or the same product. <laughs> Earlier, we spoke about work holding as the predecessor to automation. Therefore, your investment can be transferred over once you are ready to tackle on that old big word automation. So, let's say you have system like this in play. How hard is it to move a system like that by hand versus having a loading and loading device like a robot system? Well, it's simple. Very similar in the way we went with the other one. You just have to build a grid. And in this case, instead of my arm moving everything, we will set up a robot system that will deliver these devices to you. Here's we have an example of a cell sent device. Part can sit in here. This system, let's say this was your five axis uh, sub bed. You can mount something like this on here. You can remove, the robot then will come and remove these vise and you have multiple parts sitting on this vise on a storage rack. The robot then will come, lift and drop into this and clamp down on this system, okay? One of the things we want to know about this system is it too has a high repeatability of 110. The clamping force on this is 11,000. Extremely low profile, it is only 40 millimeter in height. You can then now make this system your five axis baseline work holding product. Should this Similarly, we have a manual vise, we also have an actuated vise using pneumatic. When you are tending to vise with blank part, you can certainly put on the manual vise and have the robot pick the vise. And that is generally when it comes to OP20. On an OP10 where it's just a blank raw material, the robot can pick up the raw material and deliver to such a device, open and close, by pneumatic okay so this whole thing can be delivered the blank can be delivered this vice now you have a clamping element that allows you to do roughing profiling your workpiece on the op 10 so generally this is our op 10 that become our op 20 and automation okay similarly be because a lot of time when you do five axis profiling what happened is you're gonna get very close to the, the spindle can get very close to your trunnion where it start rotating. Should you need a riser to bring your part up higher for spindle clearance or for machine bed clearance, we also produce a riser that again duplicate the system and allow it to increase the height of your part for clearance purposes. A system like this can be reoriented in multiple area. The cap we have here, in case if you're not using these other two parts that are on the other side, if you want to reorient, this cap can be dropped in, clamped down, and keep debris, any kind of uh, chips or any contamination away from the center of the pot. So, we have introduced to you the work holding as a standalone product. We've introduced to you the work coding ability to flow into the automation process should that be the next step of the, uh, your shop growth. Today, we're gonna, now we're going to talk a little bit about this tombstone. Now many of us out there have a nice tombstone, have a nice horizontal with tombstone gridded for lean manufacturing with tap hole and have a, a, a pattern of dowel hole. In this case, we're using vice. This tombstone is connected to an automation system to where you do not need to have to plumb airline or anything like that. You buy this thing, you plug it on your pallet and a robot system will come and manage your load and unloading without having to change sheet metal or anything like that. Simply how it works. Up here we have an air chamber throughout the, the body. The robot arm will then comes in here, feed air, 
comes over here, hold on to the part, wirelessly send the signal to unclamp, load a new part, wirelessly sell the signal to clamp the table. Then the robot will come and indexes 90 degree and repeat the process to all four surfaces. This is, I believe, a game changer when it comes to managing a horizontal machine on automation. Why? Simply put, you don't have to mess with sheet metal. No one want to modify their machine. Everything can be self-contained. You buy this and the system, we plug it in front of your machine and you're ready to go. I'll make it sound simple, but there's a little bit more work than that. Let's take you over there and take a look at that system. Over here we have a SCARA system. It is not an industrial robot, it's a four-axis robot. It has a capability of handling up to 220 pounds. Parts like that, like a raw material, will be put on here. This is the end of arm that will manage that tombstone and will index the tombstone as I discussed earlier. This system is built not just for the horizontal machine, but for vertical tending, for five-axis tending, it is the extreme high mix low volume environment which most chop shops find themselves in today. This is always the question. People say, well automation, do I need 20 or 30,000 parts to call myself automation? You really don't. We can tackle that, that task for you quite easily. Okay? Sound good? So. I'm sure by now you're looking at the last system and wondering, do I have the pocketbook for that? Some does and some doesn't. Investment can be incremental, like I said, with the work holding. Don't need automation just yet. Or you can take a, what we call a, a foot into the sh uh, shallow end. Don't jump into the deep end with these high systems, no problem. What we have today in front of you are two cobalt systems. One are built for the mill, the other one are built for the lathe. These are priced effectively costs so that you can get into an environment where we call unmanned machining. What are the challenges? Think about this for a moment. You say, right now, 90% of the shop are one operator to one machine. And now the burden is, how do I find the operator to operate one machine? Well, why not have one operator run three machines with the aid of the device of loading unloading system like this, right? Because again, this guy can work while someone go load another set of new part, blank, come back around, unload the finished part, and, and that's the circle of one to three machine. Cost effectively, it'll, again, simple step to ease the burden for today. Tomorrow, when that process is fine, uh, fine stream, you can now move to the bigger system and have maybe a little bit of a light out environment you want to touch on. Thank you very much.